I'm Todd Crawford. I'm Eric Zavinsky. We are too cool for the comic shop. You're too slow, Todd, because it took you 11 years to finally play Sonic Colors. That's true. You know why? Why is that? Because you didn't have a Wii? No, I was too cool. And also, uh, I didn't have a Wii. Cool. And also, to be too quite cool honest... The Nintendo Wii and Sonic. You know, Sonic, in a lot of ways, is kind of a dated concept. It's a little backwards sometimes. It's like a time trip to the 90s with the you're too slow and way past cool. And I honestly thought that in line with that, Sonic Colors, when I heard it, I thought it was called Sonic Colors. And it was like a segregation thing where it was Sonic for people who weren't white, which I found strange. <laughs> but I was like, all right, this isn't made for me. I respect it. I'll give them their space. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> when it was out, I was like, finally, Sonic Colors for white people. It's inclusive. Oh, now. man. <laughs> Sonic Colors is like the whitest Sonic game. Honestly, if I had to like, if I had to put them on a scale or something, I'd feel like, oh, uh, you know, the '90s. Maybe there's, maybe there, uh, maybe there's some more mass appeal in the '90s games and the adventure titles and Sonic Colors. We'll get into it. What am I? Like, uh... White guys wrote that that game <laughs> script. Sonic Colors is what, just poorly written. One of my favorite pictures of all time is Kanye West playing Sonic Two. <laughs> I, I, think, um, I think the adventure series had some different cultural appear, appeal without accidentally saying something actually offensive <laughs> instead of just mocking offensive yeah. things. Uh, it, it seems like a lot Sonic of... Adventure had like uh, Knuckles uh, music rapping about Pumpkin Hill. and Oh, that's know, true. I was, was... was going to say, everybody fucks with Shadow, it seems like. Like, when Shadow came out, it was like, Sonic just got legit. Yeah, no, pretty much. And then quickly people thought shadow was the laughing stock a few years later and then the science games have been through a weird cycle of the fan reaction and and things and I, I thought it was interesting to talk about this because sonic movie was our first too cool for the comic shop episode i just kind of want to come full circle and uh focus on like a game specifically but also the games because uh this is what we're getting for this year. Um, this is the 30th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog. This game yeah. in particular, Sonic Colors Ultimate, is a remake of a uh, 2010 Nintendo Wii game. So that's when I played it, when I was like in high school in 2010. So I'm just kind of curious just to focus on one game before we dig deep, you know, what your experience was like. Yeah, so it's funny because when you boot the game up, it immediately starts with these like piano keys, unless I'm mistaken, in which case it doesn't start with piano keys. But it looks it's like kind of like the theme song, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it starts with that, and it's like a very lush green forest and Sonic running, and then a wisp. Yeah. So yeah, the the game starts with like this intro cutscene where it's like a piano playing, and it's a lush forest, and Sonic's running, and a wisp flies up next to him, and. I was like, wow, this is like Miyazaki or something, you know, like the brighter parts of Princess Mononoke or something like that. Um, the Wisps themselves almost in that scene almost is like a Totoro kind of thing where it's like a mystical forest, it seems like. And then immediately it like goes into the shitty pop punk kind of song. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, no, right. it's this actually is Sonic. Uh, kind of a band that I listened to a little bit, uh, Cash Cash, because this kind of started started getting like actual popular american groups to record stuff whereas like the adventure tales they got like washed up rock stars <laughs> basically <laughs> um so yeah now reach for the stars man you know this 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 game and, and that's something you, you always have to credit sonic for even his worst games have at least decent soundtracks like where it's like there might be two or three serious bangers even the worst sonic soundtrack but getting into the game itself I honestly I heard this game was good for years um, but I was worried to play it to be honest like Unleashed I was always curious about I heard good things about half the stages but uh, it at least seemed like an interesting concept I had played Generations which is maybe my favorite Sonic game and I really didn't care that much for the, the colors level it was really my least favorite level in the game because the Wisps didn't seem fun 
they seem kind of gimmicky and intrusive to the gameplay and flow. And so I felt like the yeah. whole game would be that. And I agree with you on the generations colors level. It's kind of it's not really built around that game, and it's kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, in in this game, they're much less intrusive and much more, quite frankly, just kind of useless. <laughs> it's like it's alternate path stuff. But for the main game, just to play through it, you're not using the wisps that much. Um, no. A good counterpoint, I would say, is Crash 4, is I was worried it would be like the Wisps uh, when that came out, and I thought it used the different gimmick uh, abilities seamlessly and perfectly, and it made the gameplay better. This makes the gameplay deeper, if that makes sense. It gives it more complexity in how you can choose to play the game. Right. I would agree with that. Um, they, were, they were really struggling around this time in the Sonic franchise to kind of think give sonic some sort of gimmick that didn't feel too insanely different than you know the normal gameplay of like running and jumping because uh pu the past couple sonic games of four colors uh he turned into a werewolf and he had a sword so like they were experimenting in this uh in these like turn of the 2010s era right we, there we all go through phases in life you know <laughs> Sometimes for yeah. a year we're a werewolf. Sometimes for a year we carry a sword around. I mean, who can blame them? Right, and you know, to varying effects, you know, Sonic Unleashed is actually my favorite Sonic game of all time. The Wii version, particularly. Um, so you know, there's different different strokes for different folks, but I think they kind of with colors they settled on something. And they've been using the Wisp gameplay since because I know you've also played Sonic Forces. And the, the Wisps are, like, kind of evolved into weapons in that game. So they've they've kind of been actually doing the whole... Oh, that's right, I forgot about for, that. Yeah, they've been doing the whole Wisp thing for, like, a decade now. Um, they obviously want people to not forget about it because they remade this game. So it is kind of interesting. It's uh, kind of started something that lasted way longer than I ever thought it would in that way. Yeah, and you know my ultimate thoughts on this game being re-released for the 30th anniversary and really the whole thing in general, my my thoughts on this re-release. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> like, after some of the worst Sonic games we've gotten and all that, this came out, and uh, it's not the best Sonic game. It's a good Sonic game, and it's not the best remaster. Some of it's a little embarrassing, but for the most part, yeah. it's fun. And the greatest compliment I can give it is that it's more fun the more I play it. I had more fun playing it the second time than the first, and even more fun playing it the third time than the second. I think that's the mark of a good Sonic game, too, is that it does get more fun as you replay it. I mean, you think about the Genesis games, the first time you played those as a kid. Um, you know, the first couple levels breeze by, but then they kind of get hard as shit, and you have to get better at your uh, at your skills and i feel like those are great examples of they get more fun the more you play them if, if colors does that same thing then I would, I would agree with you completely like it's definitely not my favorite sonic game but it is in the echelon of good sonic games i would say um being said the remake doesn't really add anything to the original that really matters so if you still have your nintendo wii and you can play Sonic Colors on that because you bought it 11 years ago. You know, the the ultimate version isn't really that ultimate. It's it's almost identical. There's, you know, there is also that going for it. It doesn't really matter if you have the original or the remade version. That is something I looked into before this uh, recording because I wanted that perspective to some degree. So I watched a lot of gameplay footage and stuff. And honestly, the ultimate version doesn't look that much better. Colors looked very oh, good it really first time. Uh, colors it's ultimate. Surprising. I thought it might look more like a, an improvement than what it is, but it. Uh, this it might really be. Isn't. This might be controversial or something, but I honestly think Forces looks better. I would probably say it's been a long time since I played it because my copy was actually stolen. Uh -huh. But I think Generations looked better, especially. And oh, this I is... think you're completely right. Well, I'll tell you why you're right. You know. Sonic Colors, even the Ultimate version that just came out, uh, based on a 480p 
we game, right? Um, Sonic Forces was built for modern platforms, you know, like Switch, PS4, Xbox One. Um, Sonic Generations even was built for PlayStation 3, uh, Xbox 360. So, like, definitely not wrong because those other Sonic games that you mentioned are built for better hardware. So I, I completely agree with you on that. And here's the thing with it, and I understand I'm sympathetic to a degree, like the cutscenes. They there was some issue where the original files are lost or something, so they use this AI kind of filter, so to speak, to upgrade the images. And quite frankly, the cutscenes. Um, now I'll say two things with this. First of all, this era of graphics I am very nostalgic for, like Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure Two kind of graphics. I love that. I grew up on that, so I'm endeared to it. But looking at it critically, the fact that this game came out in 2021. And you've got graphics and backgrounds that look like they came from a Sonic Adventure DX. You know, that's embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, that's pathetic to charge money for that. And, okay, they lost the files. You've made Sonic games. Completely make them from the right. ground up then. You've made CGI Sonic series. There is no excuse for that amount of cheapness and laziness. Even though I like it. Yeah. I can't excuse it. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um no, and, and my, my bigger hang-up with the cutscenes is that Sonic Colors marked the end of Sonic being cool. I don't know what your thoughts are. Since you haven't played as many Sonic games as I have, um, Sonic's basically split up into three eras at this point, and you have, like, the, the 90s, which are very much the uh, uh, out-of-the-gate, the attitude, the mostly classic platforming era, and then you have the adventure era that really lasted from 1998 through 2009. Um, some people call it the dark era, where Sonic was still edgy, like had the, all these crazy uh, storylines going on with all of these different characters. And that's what I grew up on, and I really enjoyed that. Sonic Colors is the game that kind of reset Sonic the Hedgehog. And uh, that's when they started basically only using Sonic, Tails, and Eggman again. But instead of being cool... Um, the dialogue in this game is uh, it's written for like five year olds and it's kind of embarrassingly not cool anymore. Uh, and that's that's really what bugs me. Well, the you know most what about happened? Sonic, Colors. Sonic was cool, and then he got way past cool. And way past cool, you know what lies way past cool? Lame. Uh, I, I don't know, tell me. <laughs> dork. <laughs> yeah, dork. No, exactly. No, isn't Sonic a freaking dork in this game? Well, there's like. A to give another perspective on it, um, I, I've, I've played at least a decent amount of games from pretty much every era I, that I think I, I can think of. Um, yeah, but, I think you have. You, you've played the Genesis games and you, you've played yeah, Adventure. I've played all of those. Yeah. The Adventure games, Heroes, Generations, Forces. Uh, I don't think Mania counts, but it kind of does because of the Forces tie-in yeah. with Classics. You've played so. at least like three games from each era pretty much. Exactly. So you, you get what I'm saying. And I've read the comics, and and this is more specific, and this ties into my opinion, is that so what they did was they essentially took Sonic from the Sonic Sat AM series, with a huge supporting cast, and it's dark and dystopian, and forces and love forces are hated. That was the concept essentially, you know. Right. Um. So what they did with Colors, which of course Colors was on much earlier, I should say, and Adventure and Adventure Two also did that kind of Sonic Sat AM edgy darkness. So what they did was they took it from that to the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which everybody mocks and thinks is the most ridiculous, yes. immature thing ever. And I grew up on, and it was a defining part of my childhood. <laughs> so it, no, I mean it, that's fair too. When you're so five, you know, it does kind of kind of depends on like yeah, what you grew up with, what you resonated with, and you know, and what your kind of like image of Sonic is. Which, to be fair, is going to be different for everybody who's ever experienced him. In video games, but like you said, cartoons, comic books. Yeah, it's so just like, uh, it's wide gamut. Playing it today, even though I have that nostalgia for Goofy Sonic, playing it as a 53 year old man today, you know, like the jokes <laughs> don't all land. Some of them did. I'll give it credit. There was one or two that actually made me laugh. They were yeah. stupid, but there was one thing about Dr. Eggman. They say something about copyright law or something, prevents something, and Sonic says, no, no no copyright law can stop me or something. And it was, uh, once again, stupid, dorky humor. 
but some, something about that got me. The two robots reminded me of the robots from uh, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, it yeah, that's pretty much what they're going for. They don't have like the same names, but it's like the same idea. Like Sonic X, which is yeah. like the anime version when I was a kid. Oh yeah, like, yeah, they, I forgot about that. That one's great. Yeah, no. So they they did the two robots bickering. I like, forgot in that about one that. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So you no, know, they they do they do that well enough, and I Sonic Colors isn't objectively bad in that way, and I, I think it is kind of geared towards children a bit more, which yeah. I, I just think is kind of funny because you know. The 90s and then in the adventure era, I feel like the main demographic, like Sega's marketing was like, we're going after teenagers. And then the little kids will want to play what the teenagers are playing. I feel like that that was the strategy for Sonic for like at least the first 15, maybe 20 years. Yeah, and um, I think with adventure, not only did technology get more sophisticated, but the five-year-old that played the first game, they now wanted to play play adventure as a 15 year old or whatever so they were kind of yeah, growing fair. up with the fans and by the time Sonic Colors came out those people were in college or they were doing you know by the time when you're like 16 17 in high school some people stay true to those games I know some people that still played them a lot of us kind of took time away from Sonic for a bit um, yeah, or video games in general <laughs> oh yeah for sure Not when me. you're studying all the time and you're involved in extracurricular activities you know, like even playing just like one game a year was a lot. But like the You're fans of colors that point. kind of making that U turn in tone. It is immature, it's not well done. I think the recent Sonic movie shows how you can have universal appeal, make it a, not a kid's game or a teen's game, but a family property. Right. That people can enjoy. Um, this was definitely yeah. geared towards children and you know Sonic's a kid's game. It's not just for kids, but I can appreciate that I may not like it. I don't think it's great writing for children. I think kids deserve better <laughs> humor in their content, which is another discussion. But it didn't offend me because at the end of the day, I'm 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 27 years old playing a Sonic game. So I'd feel kind of silly being right. like, that's not funny. That's not... I, I watched a Woody Allen movie and that was funnier today. Like, of course not. <laughs> You're way too old I, for this. I thought you were a 53-year-old man. What are, what are you talking about? You get older every time we have the podcast. Well, it's kind of a time is a flat circle, you know? So it's like a disc <laughs> spinning in the tray. I am at 157 and 23. I want to play the, the Sonic game where Sonic uh, gets aged up, sped up his age until he's like a 53-year-old man. And it's like it's like an RPG or something. Like Dude, there is anymore. a Sonic RPG. Yeah, it's Dark just FYI. Brotherhood. It's called Sonic Chronicles or the Chronicles. Dark Brotherhood for Nintendo DS. I'd never played it, but I knew somebody who did, and they hated Sonic because uh, it gave them a migraine, I guess, all the, like, the fast moving or something. And, uh, really? They liked the Chronicle, I think. They, that was like, the only one they liked. Chronicles give you a migraine for different reasons, though. <laughs> like, the, the performance of the game is um, pretty famously bad. A good off-brand yeah. Sonic game, I thought, A, the, the Sonic Adventure games were good. Um, I didn't play the third as much, but particularly the first two, but Sonic Battle, I think it was called, it was a fighting game in which you play as a robot. Yeah. That was a great yeah, game, at least that. as a kid, for that hardware. Did you just say there was a third Sonic Adventure game? Because you're going to, like... Advance. Oh, oh I meant advance. to say Advance. It's so, like you're going to make people real excited. <laughs> There was a third Sonic Adventure game. It was called Sonic 06. But you're completely right. No, it, it, Sonic 06 is Sonic Adventure 3. I will die on that hill. You I, I will 06? too. It's so funny because like, I wanted Sonic Adventure 3 for so long. And then when I actually found out what Sonic 06 was other than the memes, I was like, oh, this is exactly what Sonic 06 or Sonic Adventure 3 would be. And here's the thing with Sonic Adventure. Everybody loves it. It's a Sonic fan. Half the people who aren't like it, um, A, they aged horribly, and I love the games, but it's just a fact. I still have fun, but they have aged poorly. Um, and only were like maybe a quarter of the games were actually fun. The Sonic stages and the Sonic and Shadow stages, and arguably some other ones, were a blast. And you could replay those for hours, but that's only a portion of the game. 
And a lot of those games were not that fun. I think people, again, it's a very much a nostalgia thing where people are super convinced that two adventure games are the best thing ever that happened to Sonic. And I'm like, I do think they're both good. I don't think they fall into the uh, bad spectrum of Sonic games, of which, you know, you can kind of cut the series in half and be like, half of Sonic games are quote-unquote good and half are quote-unquote bad. But, uh, you know, they're not, they're enjoyable. But I think if you, if you're a fan and you started out, say you started out with Sonic Colors, then you went back and played Adventure 1 and 2, like, I think a, a new kid, like a new gamer today might have a, a lot of trouble, maybe. Even I've had trouble, like, revisiting Adventure 1 and 2 in the past couple of years. Like, I'm I'm worse at them now than I was when I was a child, and I don't know why. Yeah, I've definitely, I've shown both the first and second when I was in college to different people who didn't play them growing up, who weren't Sonic fans. And I could tell both times that I was honestly disappointed revisiting them and that i was even in my disappointment even though i was enjoying it i was so disappointed i was still having a lot more fun with it than the other people who had no nostalgia for them and those games i think they were great for their time i think they age poorly a lot of classic games age poorly i don't think that's indicative of the game necessarily but i i think there's definitely the peaks of Sonic Adventure series are completely different games than the low points. And I think we have to acknowledge that. I, I would agree with that. And but this is I coming from a fanboy. I, I actually love Sonic 06 if it wasn't full of glitches and, and crappy design. Like, I think that game could have been good. It was, uh, it was not like the complete utter dumpster fire that I feel like the Sonic Boom games were in the past decade for example. Yeah, I even think from what I've read, Sonic Boom sounds like in theory they had these plans and it's the classic tragedy of a famous IP getting rushed out in the studio with good intentions oh, totally. just gets screwed. And I love those stories. I have like a fetish for researching them. Uh, like You're Spyro right. and Crash Bandicoot. All those mascots look into that stuff with the third party developers. Especially the ones hired by Universal, like the ones I mentioned. And it's the same story every time. And w when you laugh and you're playing, like, what were they thinking? Why did they do this? You realize, oh, they didn't have a choice. They had, like, half a game. And <laughs> they had to get it out by this date. Yeah. No, you're completely right about that. They rushed that shit out, I believe, for 2014 holiday season. They had no choice. On to, like, reboot the whole series. But it didn't work. And I had like a cartoon as well, and it was a weird time. Um, again, Sonic's just been through so many weird phases. You look at a franchise like Mario that definitely has different games, and Mario does a lot of different stuff. You can really like see and understand like a like a rising line on a bar graph. Like you can uh, you can understand Mario's trajectory. I feel whereas Sonic just. Like, we're zigzagging up the whole fucking bar graph, and it just oftentimes doesn't even make any sense, like, where we go from point A to point B, C, all the way to Z. It's just Well, I think there's line. a few things with it. The first thing I want to say is the solution to the Sonic dilemma. If you want Sonic to be an A-list, AAA gaming mascot again, the simple solution is to treat him like one. Speaking only to the company, of course, not to the fans. <laughs> it's not a matter of toxic fandom, even though the toxic the, the Sonic fandom is very strange. No, like toxic. the good fans are there. That's exactly. not the problem. Like people still want Sonic, like really bad. The fact like, that he still exists after the bullshit us fans have been put through over the years says a lot. Does. It, well, and the fact that his movie was as successful as it was, like, you know, I know it was the year of coronavirus's introduction. But the biggest year of movie of 2020. Well, Sonic was worried. too fast for the, for COVID. He snuck in Sonic just was in too time. fast for COVID. He got he got right in there right before. <laughs> COVID's too slow. Yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> but, <laughs> but really, though, like honestly, the biggest thing for the Sonic team or Sega or whoever's making the big calls 
is to say, okay, scrap everything. We're taking like three years or something to develop a Sonic game. We're putting, it's just one. We're putting all our effort into it. And we're going to make this like a triple A game. And we're going to rebuild it from the ground up. That's what they need to do, in my opinion. And Sonic. I agree with you. And I feel like, I feel like I thought that they would have been doing that forces because i i pay a lot of attention to the history of video games and, and release schedules and all that stuff's very important if you look at the dark era you know i'm talking like shadow the hedgehog sonic 06 sonic and the secret rings unleashed sonic and the black knight people like maybe one or two of those five games sometimes people hate all five of those games all of those games came out like year after year after year after year after year you know like they were sonic team was cranking that shit out um, I think that is part of why Sonic never feels polished or treated well. For you sure. Look at, you look at uh, Sonic Forces, last Sonic Team game was like four years prior. So I had thought Forces was going to be, oh, wow, they took their time with this. But then I looked into it and it turns out they didn't. They didn't take their time with Forces. And I'm just like, when are they ever going to learn that lesson? Exactly, and, and and the thing is, is too, is like, I feel like there's, I always use this comparison for things, but it's Beatles and the Rolling Stones. So Mario's the Rolling Stones, where you buy a Rolling Stones album, you know what you're going to get, more or less. They're going to stick to generally the same formula, with a new gimmick or two thrown in there. Maybe this one's a little more blues influence, maybe this one's a little more electric, maybe this one's a double album, but you know the Rolling Stones, and you know probably what it's going to sound like for the most part um and that's not a criticism i listen to the rolling stones more than i listen to the beatles these days the beatles on the other hand uh revolver sounds nothing like sergeant peppers which doesn't quite sound like abbey road which doesn't quite sound like magical mystery tour sonic wants to be like the beatles where it's reinventing itself or you could even say david bowie i guess would be a better comparison more famously oh my but... god well that harkens back to our first <laughs> podcast we ever did together <laughs> that's funny that is true but the thing with sonic though is that it's not refined so he wants to completely reinvent himself now i'm speaking as though sonic himself is a real person making these decisions for his games and yeah, no, Sonic is the freaking <laughs> executive of uh, Sega and Sonic Team. And Mario's running Nintendo. He's got like an office and he's got his legs up on the desk and people walk in and answer to him. But Yeah, well, hey, Mario is like a 30-year-old man and Sonic's just a teenager. So maybe that really explains a lot of these business decisions. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, though, is like Sonic wants to, Sonic Team is constantly trying to reinvent the formula that people generally like especially like that's what made colors work is that with uh unleashed fans are like we love these daytime stages and people are split on the nighttime stages so they said we right. need to bring sonic back we're going to do a game full of the daytime stages and i think that's why it's the most universally liked game from that phase because they stuck to the fucking formula no, you're completely right. Yeah, and it's not rocket science to figure that out. I don't think, and yeah, maybe, maybe Sonic Team and Sega thinks it is. I, I, I really hope. So we are getting a Sonic game that is brand new, not a remake, 2022. I really hope that the whole idea of you, uh, you know, like it's a triple A game. Like, give it the with that credit that it deserves i hope they're doing that this time right because like between forces and next year's game that's five years that that's got to mean that they're putting like actual thought in this time and not like rushing a game out in 18 months you know i've read leaks and typically i'm always weary of them and i still am of course but um a lot of leaks from like 4chan's v board like crash 4 was all leaked on there and it was 100% true uh last of us 2 leaked 100% true a lot of that stuff and it was on there and it's lined up with other sources for leaks i've read that the game is kind of more rpg based um there's a title out and all this or a working title and the the reception from the test players or whoever's leaking it is saying that it's pretty mixed to negative 
which to me means nothing because I like Sonic. So like, I might like it as a fan. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. But <laughs> it, 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 here's what's fucked up. Even if it's a bad game, I still kind of look forward just to getting new Sonic content. And that's what I mean yeah, by I beggars mean, can't be choosers. To feel, I'm kind of in the middle of like the philosophy of like, yeah, I want Sonic to kind of like refine its core gameplay so that it has its act together, like Mario, for example. Um, and you look at the, you look at how spread out like game releases are for Mario and say The Legend of Zelda, for example. The recent Zelda game, Breath of the Wild in 2017, is five and a half years after the most recent other 3D Zelda game, which also just got remade this year. You look at that and it's like, oh yeah, it takes time to make games. Really, it's just kind of the key takeaway there. If you want them to be like critically acclaimed and everybody loves that. Or, you know, you brought up the, the rushed release of uh, the, the Dark Era of Sonic. It was one year for each game. So if you want a game twice as good, take two years, which still is a pretty consistent release set schedule. I don't love the series. I've never been a fan, but... Call of Duty was putting out games one a year, and they had two companies that it'd be like, you know, this year this company releases their Call of Duty, next year the other company releases theirs, and they'd cycle through it. And it's not for me, but fans of that series were consistently happy getting a yearly model. And Sonic may not be Call of Duty big anymore, but he's big enough that they could do a year and a half instead of a year. Or if they're going to spend four or five years making a game, they're going to actually make the game. Like, I hate to just be so simplistic, but it's truly just a terrible business model and people that have no idea what the fuck they're doing. When you see, like, Colson Whitehead, or Christian Whitehead, I'm sorry, uh, when you see him put out games, or even his remasters of the Sonic Genesis games, and their quality, and they're good, and then you get Sonic Colors, which, there's the graphics issues, people have had bugs and stuff. I've, I've only had a few bugs, not as bad as people say. But I have had one game breaking bug and a few other ones that just were very frustrating. And right. for a remake of a Wii game that Wii should be game simple, itself, by the way, did not have bugs like that, like at all, from what I have experienced. Exactly. Like if somebody asked me, like, oh, I heard the bugs were terrible, should I get it? I, I would say don't worry about the bugs. It's probably not gonna change your experience. And I played the game before the the uh update was out too. So like that could be a well. factor. I didn't actually experience any bugs. Um, I think like a couple like glitchy graphic stuff, but nothing that really inhibited my gameplay. Yeah, I didn't at first, and then I had I don't remember what it was. I can't say specifically, but I know that I literally had to end the application in the PlayStation. And I told myself, once it, I'm Team Sonic, I'm not one of those people like oh these games suck. Like I've been playing them all my life, but in the name of fairness. Yes, I had one game-breaking glitch. Which I don't think is that big of a deal, to be quite frank. You know? <laughs> I've had that with tons well, of games there that is I kind of like a games media bias against Sonic. Like, there always kind of has been, especially in the past decade and a half. Like, you know, Sonic games get like 2 out of 10s. And, and, and whenever yeah. a Sonic game is glitchy, you'll see every single Let's Player, like like make jokes about it for years to come and it's like there are other games that have problems and and honestly the internet is probably less kind of sonic than maybe almost any game franchise out there so i think a lot of it is often overblown i i, I agree and i do get that on the flip side i see another side where it's like a i hate to say this but it, it gets clicks people want to see a game get trashed so, and I'm not saying that makes it ethical, right. but I see that financial and honestly, motivation. Yeah, for sure. And I think Sega should, I don't know, maybe like acknowledge and realize that at this point. Maybe if their testers realize, oh, Sonic Colors Ultimate is pretty glitchy. God knows that's all people are going to focus on when we release this game. Maybe they should have held off releasing that game a little bit too, even if it was just a remake. I feel like maybe that was rushed, you know, like... Oh, for sure. It should realize rushed. these things and kind of get ahead of it beforehand, you know. But... Well, one thing I want to say on, on colors, because um, I know that we're kind of short on time tonight, uh, to reel it back in with that, is that 
I, I heard a lot of people say they didn't love that a lot of the games uh, 2D side scrolling platforming and that it's slower and it is um, I actually much prefer that to the boost it felt to me and oddly enough like a Mario game to the point where like each level has a different kind of a uh, gimmick or there's different worlds and different stages which you know is not unique to Mario but that is a uh, it, it's basically the Super Mario World map thing that you you uh, travel around and uh, I'm trying to think of what it is but it's like these this floating thing that shoots out spike balls that hurt you which remind me of the the hammer throwing guy in Mario um, the right. game felt to me like it was trying to be a Mario game and that's not a criticism it's not as good as you know the good Mario games. I'm not going to go that far, of course, but it felt right. like they honed in on what works. And it's not the fastest Sonic game. You're not going to be flying through all these places, going this high speed kind of shit up the side of a building. There's a lot of fast stuff. There's a lot of gimmicky platform stuff. Saying that in a fun way, I have no problem with gimmicks um, as long as they're well executed, which I think a lot of this game has. But uh. The, the big thing that I noticed replaying it, I had so much more fun, and then I was like, oh, well, I'm not replaying the bosses, I'm just playing the, the levels, and so I replayed a boss or two, and there's two different modes of the bosses, in my opinion, piss easy, where you hardly even have to try to defeat them, or frustratingly difficult in a way that feels unfair because the game's just not well made enough to make it a legitimate challenge. Yeah, I feel like Sonic has always struggled with implementing good boss battles. And colors is no different. <laughs> I'd say the Genesis era did pretty well in some of the games, but the three D yeah, for sure. Probably some of those Genesis boss fights. Well, some of those Genesis boss fights suck, but some of them are also pretty good. Like I think uh, in three D Sonic just and they just don't they don't get it for the boss battle. Like the Ferris wheel boss that you fight. Also, each boss in Colors, other than the final boss, you fight twice, essentially, which is also kind of stupid. Yeah, no, it feels lazy, because it's like... That's, it's very lazy. Um, and, I don't know. Like, the Ferris wheel boss, you'll kill in, like, 20 seconds, like just by, like, pressing buttons. It doesn't even matter which button. It doesn't matter if you jump, or if you boost, or if you use a wisp. Like, you'll probably hit the weak spot, and you'll be done. Exactly. The, the one level that I love the moon stage... To me, that took me right back to, like, Sonic Adventure 2 era. The aesthetics were fun. The shark wisp is my favorite. Um, I love that section in particular. Um, oh, yeah, the asteroid coaster levels. But yeah. the level where it's, like, basically um, you're on rails in a race against the uh, Beatles. How the fuck do you beat that level? I've beaten it, and I don't know how. I just played it until it eventually it stops. Like it's it's scripted that you go around the moon like five times or something. Really, that's it. Pretty sure it just ends. Yeah. Okay, because but it doesn't feel like you're making progress, of course, because nothing different is happening. Like you're just hitting the Beatles for like five, six, seven revolutions. But no, I'm pretty sure that's it because the red rings are like different like the red star rings the main collectible like mm -hmm. if you miss one you miss it for the whole level so you got to like replay the level and kind of memorize where they're going to come up okay yeah i played that and i beat it a few times like i hate it because it just feels pointless and it's not yeah fun. <laughs> it's a fun idea and that's i think the execution blows. a lot of fluff in sonic colors like oh yeah. there's six acts per world and some of the acts feel great and they're like full levels some of the acts are like these tiny little bite-sized pieces of other levels you've already played. I just don't really get it. Like, this game is short. It's only like a two-and-a-half-hour game. Yeah. Maybe three hours. Which... Then some of the content, like the boss battles and a couple of the levels, are like also recycled. And, and here's what I have to say about that. Is like, for its time, I get it. Um, once again, the good content in Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 is probably that long. Um, oh, yeah, and, or and shorter. Yeah, I mean, side yeah, games are exactly. never long. And it's about the replay. It's about going back and finding faster routes, finding the red stars, using different wisps at different locations. Um, it's the replay that's the meat of the game, in my opinion. With that said, one and once again, this is my whole thought on this re-release. It's 2021. 
Crash Bandicoot did three games in one release. They did it for Spyro. They did it for Mario recently. But for Sonic, I... after years without a new game, we get one Wii update. We could have had Unleashed and Colors. We could have had oh, even Colors and way. Colors DS, which a lot of people like more than they like their, their Colors for console. Something. But it's just the... I hate to say it, it's a lazy cash grab re-release. And it's not terrible. That one they didn't even, but... like you said, they didn't even make the graphics like really HD. Like it didn't feel like, oh, this is on Colors HD. You know, like they didn't really add anything. They they added some like bullshit currency system where you can buy completely useless aesthetic crap. And that was not oh, the yeah. game. I didn't even buy but, it. I, I, didn't, I didn't spend it. a dime on any of it. It's stupid. There, none of it. No point to any of it. It's like, well, you, what they did was they're like, oh, people like the customization character creator and forces, which was kind of fun. Um, yeah, but like that, but in this, that's it's just, like actually, that was actually flashed out. Funnily exactly. And, and that's my thoughts on Colors is like, the original Colors, I would imagine, was a very good game for its time. And this is a mediocre re-release of a good game. Yeah. Again, it's mostly the same experience. I didn't experience any glitches or anything like that. But, no. Some people have. So it's like, yeah. I mean, if you've never played Colors and you like Sonic, I would say you should pick this up. Switch or PS4 or whatever. I um, agree. I've but never if you played... have played it before and you don't have like an urge to do it again, I would say skip it. Basically. Yeah. I would, I've, I've never played Colors before, like I said. Um, I played for the first time. At first, right, I was, so I think ultimately it was a good experience, like for you, like you were the prime customer for this game. I think. Exactly, and I was underwhelmed at first, the first like world, and then after that, I had more and more fun as I played it, and then like I said, I, I played it two or three times through, going through just uh, the levels without the bosses, which are worthless pretty much as a gameplay experience, and uh, yeah. you know I spent forty bucks on it, full price. And I don't regret it at all. It's worth it. And I'm going to play it again. And I'll probably have even more fun next time I play it. So I would recommend this to any fan of Sonic if they don't have the original. Oh, yeah. I would agree. I would agree. And then I think it is kind of warming people up, maybe, for whatever Sonic game they make next year. So here's hoping and praying that it's really good. I hope it's good. Saying that's I hope we like have fun with the whole cast of Sonic characters again. And you know, they were kind of in forces, but kind of not. They're like kind of it was weird. Really They're just the like in lines, cut so. scenes and they just talk to you as you try to play the game. Yeah, like they kind of did a Star Fox thing where it's like, oh, that's it's kind true. of how Star Fox feels where the your, your pilots like talk to you throughout the game, but it kind of makes sense because they're all like, all the Star Fox pilots are fighting alongside you. They're like in the the spaceships. The Sonic Forces, it didn't really like feel right because they're all like back at base and they're just like talking at you, the Sonic or the Avatar character. And I'm like, kind of weird, but okay, I'm like sure. Exactly. Well, do you th are you ready to wrap this one up? Yeah, no, I think so. I mean, again, you and I both like Sonic games. I think we like the fact that they are. The Beatles, in the sense that Sonic definitely is creative. I don't think that can really be denied. It's just really the execution, and execution means so much in the in the world of video games, really. So, for sure, and uh, hoping they can be creative and well executed as much as possible. Yeah, and I I think that any fan of Sonic can attest that the bullshit, the frustration, the anger. It's all just a part of the experience and what makes it more rewarding when a good game does come out. When you do get Generations or Mania, or even though I'm not thrilled with the remaster itself, Sonic Colors. Yeah, I think this is what people in abusive relationships say, but I can still kind of agree with that. Yeah, it, although you shouldn't stay in an abusive relationship as long as I've been faithful to Sonic. But <laughs> yeah, as long as you've been dating Sonic, that <laughs> the only <laughs> relationship I can make work. But but well, ultimately, and the, 
on Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie comes out in like six months or some shit. So God knows we'll have to talk about that when the time comes For as sure. well. Oh, um, Bruce Elba is Knuckles. It's so Wait. funny. I love that. Really is. It's it's very off topic, but did you hear about the Mario movie casting news? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's it, we live in a really special time right now. Well, you know, it's funny because it's so obvious, but yet isn't. Like, it, it's the same company that made Despicable Me, and it's kind of like, of course they would just get a bunch of celebrities. Um, oh yeah, and it's strange casting, but I'm not shocked. I think people are overreacting to a certain degree. Um, I mean, it's weird. It's it's silly. It's it's needless. But I guess to me, I just see it like, well, it's Hollywood. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess we can all come together and say, well, these companies are putting money and faith into like the Mario and Sonic movies instead of like the scary Super Mario movie that happened in the nineties. So, like, I guess we've improved as a society. <laughs> yeah, progress is progress. Yep. Well. Go too fast though, Todd. You might end up being a dork. Right. Well, before before we go way past cool, you got to rate this game, and it's tough for me because okay. I've I've gone back and forth quite a bit. And uh, at first, I was thinking seven, seven point five, and I want to say eight. If you skip the boss levels, I'd say it's an eight. If you play them as a seven point five, I'll say. So seven point seven five, I guess. Seven point seven five. I mean, yeah, I think I would. Uh, I'm gonna try to divorce it from like how lame I think the characters and story became in Sonic Colors. Oh, I don't even. Yeah, that's not even a factor. <laughs> no, because if I made that a factor, it'd be a low of a score for me. But that I really don't let that, that factor into it, you know. So I'd probably give it an eight, and I also also colors. Because I did play the original when it came out, and now I've played Ultimate, and so I feel like I'm just a little bit more tired on the game than say you would be. Being said, I'll give a seven point five. I'll be a little more critical, just because of all the weird, glitchy shit and other things that have happened to it, uh, and the release and everything. It doesn't deserve an eight. It feels unethical to give it an eight. That makes sense, and and that is my my real feelings on this is I think it's a good release in the sense that I like the game. I, I just think that it's not the worst thing Sonic fans have gotten, but we deserve so much better. Even as a re-release, even if that's what they're going to do, we should have gotten two games or three on one release, or we should have gotten a polished single game. And instead we got another. Yeah. And I'm glad we did. Yeah. I enjoy no, I, it. I totally agree. But we deserve better do deserve better we deserve werehog sonic and hd on the nintendo switch that's what i want i agree i i, I really wish that they would have done that uh I'm not gonna lie i love shaking the weird mode around to like beat people up as werehog sonic i know that's not for everybody but you know and then the sonic unleashed daytime stages are like probably perfection like at least as much as sonic can be that, I like I like Unleashed. It's also a little less cheesy too. So I love Sonic Unleashed. Might have to just talk about that game at some point. But yeah, is that one available on the PlayStation Network? Do you know? Oh God, I don't even know. Yeah. Maybe if it is. And the thing is, there are two completely different games that are both called Sonic Unleashed. There's the PS2 Wii version of Sonic Unleashed, which is my favorite version. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's the PS3 360 version of Sonic Unleashed that has completely different level designs and everything. Oh, so, I did not know that. Yeah, no, they're literally made by completely different studios. The PS3 360 Sonic Unleashed is made by Sonic Team, and the uh, PS2 Wii version of Sonic Unleashed is made by Dimps, who made the Sonic Rush Nintendo DS games and the Nintendo DS Sonic Colors game. That makes sense because those games were uh, well received, and I those didn't play them. They're good. That's why I like the Wii version the best, actually. Yeah. You'd think the shinier consoles at the time would get the better version of Sonic Unleashed, but I actually completely disagree. So. 
Well, just like the fan games, just like the third party things with Sonic, it's all counterintuitive. He's so rebellious. Yeah, I think in the past 10 years, we all must agree that Sonic Mania is like the best thing to come out of Sonic in like the past 10 years. Uh, depending on when Generations came out. Uh, Generations uh, actually is 10 years old this year. I think. That's 10 years old now, so. I I thought so, because I got it like sophomore year of college. Or junior year, I'm sorry. Yeah, because that was the big old 20th anniversary game. But until the next Sonic game comes out, I'm Todd Crawford. (laughs) And I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. And we are way past cool.